There's not a lot of greenery in Gaza, at least not in the places you'd expect to find it, like Abu Hatham's farm, which since the Israel-Gaza war four years ago has laid barren and deserted. I had a very nice plantation. A lot of visitors came to see it. Also, students from the farming school used to come and study at my place. But rockets from Israel raining down on one of the most densely populated spots on earth meant Abu Hatham needed to find another place where he could grow his crops. And so he looked towards his own home and upwards. I needed an alternative, so I made this plantation on the roof and started working again. A man can create a lot of things if he has time and energy. I can make 50,000 saplings from these 70 meters on the roof. It's an idea that's taken root in farms along the Gaza-Israel border, where much of the agriculture has been repeatedly destroyed by the Israeli army. Many farmers are unable to access their land because of the buffer zone that swallows at least a third of Gaza's farmland. Today, there is no space to have a farm in Gaza. It is very crowded. Everybody is building new houses. Where I stand now used to be a plantation for oranges and lemons. And if you look at it now, you just see buildings. Four out of five people in Gaza are dependent on food aid. Homegrown food projects like rooftop gardens can help combat malnutrition and severe poverty by allowing farmers to sell their produce. Any woman can do it. I work with my husband and my daughters till midnight. Farming should be on the ground, but we heard that we can plant in volcanic rock on our roofs, so I tried it. Farmers grow wheat, barley and a variety of fruits and nuts on these rooftops. They also raise rabbits and chickens showing how a little ingenuity can go a long way. Ask anyone in Israel or Gaza whether they think the situation is stable, and they'll tell you it's only a matter of time before the next Israel-Gaza showdown. There might be a ceasefire in place between the two sides, but no one believes it'll hold, least of all the Gaza farmers, who are always the first in the line of fire. Paul Slea RT on the Israel-Gaza border.